Blue Magic Woman, Excerpts, Part 6 Michael's thoughts have gone back to the time when he spent in a monastery previously. This room of books reminds him of his dead uncle, who was librarian in the monastery. He remembers that the librarian is usually elevated to abbot when the abbot dies or is too old to administer his duties and he wonders if there are as many conflicts of power in a mental hospital as there is in an abbey. Sitting at a desk with a Swedish novel, he glances out the window and sees only darkness. A bell rings signaling closing time for the library, and he treks back to his ward where there is at least some light. As he enters his ward, Michael sees his roommate, gray as a stone, wearing a stocking cap and his pajamas. Are you going to bed already? Michael asks lightly. The granite face does not respond. Michael asks again, and still there's no response. Michael is irritated and annoyed by the young man's unfriendliness, but he realizes the man is mad, maybe because he's so ugly. And Michael senses that this young man is like a man who has had plastic surgery for his burnt face, but doesn't dare yet to look into a mirror. Michael decides it is best to try falling asleep before his roommate starts snoring. The moonlight on the snow outside takes the darkness out of his room, and he's soon asleep. The bright bluish light from the moon deepens the shadows to the color of ink. It is a full moon, well risen above the snow-covered woods opposite the chapel door, where two men, dressed in dark clothing, exit and maneuver slowly towards the forest path that leads down to the river. The clear sky, except for a few small bowling clouds, is a glossy dark blue, and the moonlight shines on the two men's sweating faces as bats tango and take sudden swoops and turns over their heads. And then the men start to run towards the pine trees when unexpectedly three large barking German shepherds appear from the corner of the building, and the men cannon back to the door that they find locked from the outside. In frenzy they bang on the door. The taller man stumbles as if he has had a heart attack or has been hit by a bullet. One dog bites him deeply again in the ankle, completely severing the tendon, and blood spurts reddening the snow. The man screams, grasping the doorknob for support as the dogs snarl and bare their teeth. The hysterical dogs jump upon them, and with their strong jaws they nip and snap at their arms and legs. The men kick, and the shorter man in his struggle to fight back slugs his fist at one dog, and his knuckles grate along the dog's bloody teeth. The yapping, snapping mad dogs have them circled, and when the taller man trying to kick stumbles over the shorter man and falls, the dog's bloody strong teeth bite into his neck. And Michael wakes up sweating in this recurrent dream that he knows is related to the police report after the second murder at the monastery when the German police used guard dogs to prevent anyone from leaving the abbey. <laughs>